promoting mental health through healthy eating and nutritional care. Have you ever wondered how eating proper food or exercise can affect your mental health? You know, many people talk about doing it, but it is not very easy to figure out what is the relationship. Would you like to learn what is the relationship and what are some practical tips you can apply in your life so you can not only just improve your physical health, but also mental health? then you're in the right place. Please give us thumbs up if you are interested in this topic. Thank you for joining. Welcome to Happy and Healthy Mind. My name is Dr. Rosina, and I'm a psychiatrist, author, and speaker. Over the last 20 years, I have been serving as a medical doctor specializing in psychiatry, a best-selling author, and a transformative speaker. I believe that your mind is like a software that runs the hardware of your brain and body. So I started this program to share practical tips for your mental fitness so you can succeed in all areas of life without unnecessary suffering. The purpose of this program is educational, so please refer to your healthcare professional for any medical advice. Our mission is to bring health and happiness to more than a million people. So if you find any value in these programs, like, subscribe, and share so more people can be helped to live happier and healthier life. And if you're joining us during the live program, please ask questions in the comment section and we will try our best to answer. You can always text word joyful to number 38470 to get reminders for future programs so you can ask questions and also get the resources that we share in these programs. So today's uh, program, we have our guest uh, all the way from UK, Dale Wallace. Thank you, Dale, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Dr. Rosina. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on here on your on your mission to, to helping a million people. So um, hopefully I can give some value today for you and your listeners. Thank you. Thank you. So Dale will be discussing how to improve your physical health for better mental health. He is a personal trainer and on, an online coach who uses a habit-based approach to breaking weight loss plateaus to deliver transformational results in both mind and body. And who wouldn't want to lose their weight while feeling happier and healthier? So let's learn some tools from Dale. So Dale, first tell me, um, how did this topic become important in your life? For me, I, I got into sort of personal training in this industry because I kind of felt a little, well, I felt like the small skinny guy, basically. So, you know, I felt, I suppose, inferior and insecure in, in my life a little bit. And I, I wanted to kind of correct that. So I started out by just going to the gym and doing some weight training and not really knowing what I'm doing and doing everything sort of, you know, not incorrectly as such, but not optimally. And at that point, then I just sort of developed a love for it, really, and started gaining more and more confidence. Uh, which then led me to basically want to take it up as a, as a job. Um, and then now sort of 12 years on, uh, I would call it more of a vocation, to be fair. Day to day, I, the reason I get up in the morning and what motivates me to continue to get up is just knowing that I'm able to impact people's lives on a daily basis to feel healthier and happier. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, that purpose keeps us going. I always say uh, when the purpose is bigger than the problem, you can overcome the problem. Can you share example of a client? What kind of typical client comes to you and what kind of results they get when they apply some of the tools that you teach? Yeah, sure. So the typical person that I train would, would tend to be female. I do train males as well, but it tends to be a female that's basically fed up of the current situation. They've been in the gym environment previously and they've hit a little bit of a wall with the progress. Maybe they're unhappy with the way that they look in the mirror. Maybe they're not confident for the partner or, you know, potentially they, are, they aren't fit enough to run around with the kids. You know, all, all these things that make basically, as a person, make you feel insecure. And the most common ones are, as I say, wanting to wear the clothes that they want to wear to feel comfortable when they're out with the friends or with the family and stuff. So it is. it, it does tend to be an aesthetic uh, reason that people come to you. But once they start to get the improved uh, sort of aesthetic result, if you will, and they're looking better and feeling better and fitting better in the clothes and stuff, then you see the knock-on effect it has to their confidence and everything like that as well. Wonderful, yeah. Can you teach some of the techniques that you teach that uh, can help our audience at this time? 
Yeah, for sure. Obviously, it very much depends on which stage that you're at in terms of the, the, the journey with regards to whether it's exercise and nutrition that we're talking about. If you're an absolute beginner, I might approach it slightly differently to if you're someone that's kind of been in the gym for a few years and hit a little bit of a wall. But if, if we assume many of your listeners are, are beginners, what I would say is make sure that you start really, really small. What most people do is they think, I'm going to go out for a run three times a week. I'm going to do 5K. And then their body's in pieces for, you know, two weeks after. It's really sore and then they don't want to do it again. And it puts them off. And what it also does is it creates a situation where they feel like a little bit of a failure. So what I would say is start really, really small. And even if that means start by simply getting more active by going for a daily walk. I'm really, really big on setting my clients up with getting some, yes, some sun exposure outside, but also getting some energy expended by doing um, a daily walk. So I would say a daily walk is the first place to start. And I would also look towards nutrition as well. Can we clean up the diet a little bit? And I know this is where we're going to get to today in the sense of how it impacts how you feel. So I'm a big believer that what you're putting in your mouth, what you put in your body is going to impact your mood, which is going to impact your energy, how you feel, your appetite, um, and then of course your mental health. Um, so we've got to consider if we're not feeling quite happy in ourselves right now, are we doing everything we possibly can on a basic level of food and nutrients and exercise? And if we aren't, what steps can we put into place to start to make changes to that? Yeah, what I've seen is that uh, a lot of times people think that they are do eating healthy and, and they think that they are doing everything. Um, they are also aware that it's a, a big relationship between, you know, uh, the food, exercise and mental health. What we, what I've found people have trouble is having more specific advice in terms of, OK, what do I do in terms of how to add my exercise in a be- very busy schedule? If I'm feeling already tired, how do I exercise? I'm already eating healthy, like, you know what food is kind of not working in my favor and what food is working in my favor? And do you have some tips on how people can actually use some specific techniques in their life? Yeah, absolutely. So with the nutrition side of it, again, it's it's person dependent in terms of meeting them where they're at right now. So, you know, if you've got somebody who doesn't home cook very much and eats a lot of fast foods and what have you, the quick and easy win would be, of course, it's easy to say, well, have less of that. But you know, does that person know how to home cook? So could I give them a resource that would um, give them a little bit of information on how they could home cook, for example, um, and start with some basic meals. But in terms of the specific advice I would look to is I'd be reducing down the amount of processed foods that people are eating. So things that come, you know, in packets and tins and things that last a long time, right? We want to eat more things that rot. So we want to eat more fruits, more vegetables, more good quality meats and fish and things like that. Those are the things that we need to have to work optimally, okay? And when we have those things, more than the processed foods, I'm not saying cut out all of the stuff that you love. That's not something I I recommend to people because it usually results in a big binge of failure. Um, But if we can add some more of those things in, and again, going back to what I said at the start, start really small. So if you can just change one meal, if you could just change your breakfast, though, whether it be your evening meal or whatever it might be, just start with one meal and add some fruits and vegetables in there or swap out the processed food, whatever that might be for a good quality piece of meat or what have you, or if, you know, vegetarian option, if that's, that's what people go for. Um, So that's where I would start. That's very good advice because yeah, most of the time people try to have this overhaul. Actually, there are two schools of thoughts. You know, some people say, okay, if you do like, you know, small, small changes, you may not see the big results right away. And therefore, uh, your motivation doesn't last as long. Other school of thought says, go slow so you can sustain the benefit that you are bringing in your life. And so I really like this idea of choosing one meal a day where you add the veggies. And, you know, we always talk about in a plate, your half the plate should be your veggies. And one quarter could be protein and one quarter could be carbohydrate. So I usually teach my healthy plate. And, and there's a lot of uh, examples that people can search by just doing my healthy plate. And you'll see so many examples of how to divide up your plate half into veggies and you know quarter into carbs and quarter into proteins. So that's a great idea. At least start with one meal a day that you eat healthy. Good. What else? Yeah, I just I think... 
you can go for the overhaul approach approach but as i say it usually results in failure and then feeling like a failure and then you feel worse so you have to create a situation where you feel successful where you're ticking off what you plan to do and then that gives you confidence then to push on to the next thing correct correct the other thing that i've seen is like you know people may be on on a good regimen and they may be eating healthy and then they get stressed out and then they start either emotionally eating or they start eating you know it, it happens with me like you know i would go the whole day like you know really eating well and then come end of the day i'm tired and it was if it was a very stressful day i kind of forget that i was trying to do that and then kind yeah. of yeah, eat more than i was planning to let me ask actually at this time the audience when you are stressed what food do you usually reach out to yeah let's do it let's see yeah, what let's yeah. see what they say yeah uh while people are entering the answer tell me tell what is your food to go to your <laughs> i think i'm a bit of a fiend for uh, like desserts right. um so for me i like you know ice cream and chocolate All together right. so like you know like warm or like fudge cake or chocolate or what have you uh, with ice cream so that that be my go to kind of um snack if you will if it was like a a main meal sort of fast food type thing probably a burger i would say is what i would normally go for yeah 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 you, you you're my brother in that way i love chocolate <laughs> <laughs> yeah sweet tooth sweet tooth yeah. for sure yeah but like think, you know one of the things that i'm finding it that even when i have controlled my um ice cream and my chocolate i start kind of craving sweet fruits so although fruits are healthy i end up like you know eating a lot of you know sweet fruit and that can also cause problem like you know i love mangoes and i love dates and uh, so i love banana so like you know any um, any anything that is good like you know natural fruits are natural but even too much of good thing is not good right <laughs> absolutely yeah we want we want moderation we want balance and that's where you shouldn't be giving up everything you love at the same time so if you have that sweet tooth then you know find somewhere within the structure that you've set where you can still have that and one of the really good tools if i could share that that one of my clients actually does is that she has some really small little tupperware boxes like really tiny and she measures out snacks within that so a little bit of chocolate a little bit of popcorn or whatever and it's a little small like 100 calories 150 calories max and they're her go to snacks and she can you know in a head she can only have one of those so when you're feeling a little bit that way you know you can go and do that but not kind of you know destroy your whole day's progress or what have you um, by eating a whole tub of ice cream which is easily done but i do think the big thing with that is preparation so you know a if you haven't got it in the house you're making it much more difficult to to have and b if you are feeling stressed at the end of the day or what have you if you haven't made the decision already to what you're going to eat that evening then it's much more likely that you are going to go for the things that we were talking about for like burgers and what the listeners are hopefully going to be putting in the comments now uh pizzas and whatever but if you've already made that commitment maybe you've written it down i always encourage my um my guys to 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 plan on a saturday or a sunday for the week ahead and commit and then they have to make a conscious decision on the evening of whatever that might be to then not have that so if you if you're prepared and, and you plan and you committed you're much less likely then to go for the in inverted commas less healthy option Yeah that's so true you know it happens when i come in and i have to kind of prepare the food then by the time i'm doing the preparation that is the time when i put whatever uh, i do seafood whatever i see it <laughs> becomes the yeah. food yeah but then when the when the meal is prepared ahead of time then i'm less likely to eat unhealthy snacks that in, instead of the healthy meal that i was planning yeah so that's a great tip so prepare ahead of time plan ahead of time what you're going to eat absolutely yeah, that's good yeah so what are the tips uh, can you share so other tips i would say is try and, and and this might sound a little bit odd to people but what works for me personally and what i try and get my encourage my clients to do is is that if they enjoy um if they enjoy snacking and if they like to eat frequently um when i will coach them i won't then say cut the snacks out stop doing that in most cases i will try and manage it so that they can still have snacks at the times and eat at the times that they do but maybe make just some small swaps So if they for example snacked on I don't know 
two two bars of chocolate and a packet of crisps or chips as it would be the american uh, term um then we maybe would try and swap that out so we maybe put a piece of fruit in there or a small little snack that's a, a little bit uh, less dense in calories shall we say trying to stick to a similar routine but making small little swaps is normally a good way to help manage your appetite um and stop you from kind of having too much junk in there having structured time to eat yeah, well, yeah what i've seen a lot of my patients like you know they they want to lose weight and then they would go for hours in between without eating and then so if they just eat one meal then they end up eating much more because they're so much hungry so what do you yeah. tell about how frequently a person should eat yeah it's, that's a very common thing what what you just said there isn't it so a lot of people that come to me say the same I, I do think from experience that everyone doesn't always tell you the complete truth when it comes to what they're eating uh, just from <laughs> experience <true. laughs> they don't um because they're a little bit insecure and kind of almost potentially ashamed of, of their eating habits um and it's really really useful um when you're trying to coach them if they tell you the absolute truth because that that, ha- that can help you the most but what I would say in terms of frequency it would be it would be optimal um in a sense of um in a health wise in a health manner um, and a maintaining or building muscle manner to to eat more frequently than one big meal a day so maybe three hourly having something okay for weight loss alone if it was just weight loss and we weren't taking into account anything with regards to maintaining muscle or or optimal health or energy levels then meal timing or frequency doesn't matter but it, it should never be just about weight loss it should always be about how can I feel and perform at my best in my job, in the gym, in my family, etc. cetera. Um, and that will come from having regular meals that are regularly similar in, in calorie breakdown rather than doing 2000 calories at night and then barely nothing during the day. Yeah, yeah. Because it takes body about three to four hours to digest the meal. So if you are if you have a schedule of eating every three to four hours, then you are giving the fuel to your body so you can function the best and your mind can function the best. So a lot of times people may complain, like, you know, I feel irritable. And so and and as I can kind of review their eating pattern and I find out all this erratic eating pattern. And so, of course, if you're going to go for eight, 10 hours without eating and without giving the fuel to your brain and you're pushing those cells to work, they're going to become irritable. Right? It's kind of it's uh, normal. Absolutely. You're overloading the cells without giving it the nutrition. And so putting food at a specific time and having the structure because human beings are beings of structure. Our bodies respond better when there is structure. So when there is a routine time, then you're more likely to eat healthier at that time rather than going for a long period of time in between. But a lot of like, you know, there's a new movement going on talking about the benefits of fasting or intermittent fasting. Traditionally, it is believed that, you know, if you're eating on a regular regular period your body would digest better Uh, how do you respond to people who like to do the intermittent fasting or fasting for both health and uh, weight loss in addition to their religious belief if they are doing it for that yeah so um there i'm in a lot of facebook groups um and there seems to be you're right there seems to be a big movement on it at the minute um it isn't something that i've ever really done i've always been somebody personally who's required breakfast to, to function optimally but i'm as I mentioned before the small skinny guy so i turn over nutrients quite quite fast and i digest things quite quickly in, in terms of weight loss there, there's no benefit to intermittent fasting it's the case of calories over time uh, and being in a calorie deficit to lose weight so there's no bef- benefit for weight loss however Sometimes individual approaches work for different people based on their preferences and, you know, how the jobs are and, and, and when they train and things like that. But I don't coach any of my clients to do intermittent fasting personally, and I don't get many people coming to me that want to do it. That might be, as you say, I think it's a growing thing potentially, and that that might at some point come and, uh, and arrive. But my stance on it is unless you really want to do it, I, I don't really see the real the real sort of benefit to it. And it's not something I have ever really, ever really tried, if, if, if I'm totally honest. But I'm aware that the research for weight loss, you know, is is very, very strong and that there's no real benefits to doing it that way rather than just spacing your meals up. 
Well, like, you know, I, I have seen, well, I come from a Muslim background and I've seen that Muslims fast for like, you know, the whole month of Ramadan. And uh, there are benefits to uh, giving the body a little break from the regular mm -hmm. eating. But I've also seen that sometimes people forget the, you know, the purpose and then they start eating too much and then their stomach gives them trouble. And so I think from, from my viewpoint, it has to be a balance. I think it is not appropriate for people who have problems with acidity because what happens is when you go for a long period of time without eating any food and the acid that is produced in the body, then it starts kind of digesting the stomach wall because there's nothing to digest. And so it can kind of uh, cause uh, increase uh, both acidity that can cause reflux, that can cause stomach ulcers. So I think it is not appropriate for people with acidity problem. But generally, I think it's a it's a good idea to give your body a break from time to time. The other thing I don't think is a good idea to do the fasting on an ongoing basis because then it loses its benefit. So when it is done intentionally for a certain period of time or with certain like, you know, regularity, uh, that is okay. But it should not be like, you know, every day you are just eating or, or going for like, you know, 16, 18 hours. I think some research is showing about 11 to 14 hours, its benefits. So I think in particular cases, it's a good idea, but in, in some other cases, it's not a good idea. So I think each person should decide based on their uh, body's needs. Kind of shared, uh, if I try to summarize, you talked about um, start slow and swap, let's say one meal a day or um, start walking first before starting to work out. Um, the second one was to start swapping processed food, uh, healthier food, so you can decrease the amount of processed food you are putting in the body and eating more healthy food. What was the third point you shared? The other one was to add more fruits and veggies into your, into your meals, and fill your meals up with those. Right. Um, as well as, uh, sorry, the, the high quality protein as well. So add the, 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 the meats and the fishes and things like that in there. Okay. Yeah. And then how do you kind of, um, do you have any suggestions of, you know, should people exercise before eating or after eating or how should they kind of space out their exercise uh, for the best balance? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very much like most of the answers to most of the fitness questions. It depends. And, and just like you said, it very much depends on the individual. So as I mentioned, I'm someone who turns over food quite quickly. Um, so I can eat an hour before training quite hard and I can be absolutely fine. Um, whereas some people really struggle. I've had clients who are training, you know, first thing in the morning at 6 a.m. Um, and they just can't get anything down at that time. They'd have to get up, you know, far too early to do that. So something like a coffee or a black coffee. Sometimes some people, if they train really early, um, they might have like a banana or a protein shake or something along those lines. It's not too heavy, if you will. Um but it is very much test and see what happens with, with regards to people on an individual basis. Because as I say, some people, if you're similar to myself, an hour before will be fine. Two hours before, maybe for some people. You will also find as well as you test, you'll you'll find out the optimal time that, that you like to train and exercise. Now, not everybody, not everybody has the freedom to choose the time. But it might be that you choose morning or evening. And if it's morning, it might mean that you just need to test and see how that works with regards to your food timings. But as I say, you'll, you'll also find that you might train better in the morning, you might train better in the evening. So I would say test with regards to the, the nutrition and test with regards to the training as well, because it really isn't a, a one size fits all thing. I personally train better um, in the afternoon around 2, 3 p.m. Um, I've got the freedom to be able to to, to, to do that, to create my schedule like that, but I know not everybody has. Um, but some people love training at 6 a.m. in the morning. So, um, you know, as I say, it's, it's a tough one, but it, it, it really does depend. You have to test and see. So when you say train, what do you mean by train? So when I say train, I'm talking workouts in the gym. My clients, I personally recommend that the, the main basis, and the main structure of their training is, is weight training. So they get structured weight training programs. Normally when they come in, it'll be like a full body workout. So you might hear of people doing like, oh, I'm doing chest today. Oh, I'm doing legs today. Oh, I'm doing back today or what have you. Normally when you're in your first couple of years of training, um, a full body workout is is more than optimal. Um, and I get my guys to, to do that three to four times a week. Some of them like to train more. 
sometimes I have to wait, rein them back in and say, look, you know, five's more than enough. You, you need to make sure you're recovering. Um, so, yeah, with regards to training, I'm referencing structured weight training um, that ideally improves week on week. So you track that performance and then aim to increase it week on week. So how does the weight training help mental health? So there's a, there's a load of benefits that you're going to get from it. What everybody, I think, knows that when they train and when they exercise, they feel better. But sometimes in the short term, when they're thinking about doing it and it sounds really painful, um, and you know they don't want to. They kind of they kind of forget that. But you're going to get that instant release of dopamine when you when you first of all tick the box and go yes, I've actually gone to the gym. I feel good. Um, and then in terms of the benefits afterwards, it's going to improve your fitness. It's going to improve your mood. It's going to improve your sex drive. It's going to improve your body and your aesthetics over time as well. And all of those things are going to combine together to improve your overall mental health. If you're feeling healthier and happier in yourself, you're going to also give that off. People around you are going to see that and you're going to be better for them. You're going to be able to serve them better as well if you're looking after yourself. And that's why sometimes it can be seen as a selfish act to put yourself first and do these things. Now I have to go to the gym or what have you. But the reality is when you're doing that, those people around you benefit from it as well. So you are actually helping them by doing that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Do you have any take home message for our audience at this time? We talked a lot about things and I know we we left a lot of things that you were planning to talk about. And particularly you were talking about uh, benefits of sleep and stuff. I'm going to share your gift. Dale has a gift for us. He's going to share a book on uh, sleep improvement. What is it called? What's the name of your book? Yeah, so the importance of sleep, the importance of sleep, which is it's a short ebook. I think it's ten or eleven pages off the top of my head, but it just really highlights uh, why it's important and some quick, real, easy wins that you can do to impact your sleep. And I know you mentioned we didn't talk about it all that much. Your sleep is so so important to helping you recover, helping you manage appetite, mood, everything. And if if that's in the right place, you can get everything else in the right place. If your sleep's not in the right place you're going to really struggle to manage all those things. Wonderful. So thank you so much for sharing that gift. And as always, the audience can get that gift by texting uh, JOYFUL to 38470. And if you're outside US, you can just go to happyandhealthymind.com and sign up over there and you'll be able to get the gift. If you want to reach Dale, his, he has a podcast and, and the podcast name is dotheworkcoach.com. So you can check out his website and his podcast and get some more nuggets. So before we end, Dale, do you have any uh, last take-home message for our audience? Just firstly to you, Dr. Rosina, thank you for having me. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure. It's been great to have this conversation. All I would say to your audience is if um, you're not feeling you know, happy with where you are right now, whether it is you know, how you look or how you feel, you can massively change that by just making some real small changes to introducing some tiny form of exercise, making small changes to the diet. As you start to feel successful with that, you will want to build on it. Every client that comes to me always gets more and more confident on the way. The initial sort of the initial energy required to get started and, and the fear is massive, is huge. Um, and everyone has that same feeling. Once you get started, once you start feeling the benefits, you just want to continue and continue and continue. And it's always great to see the people that when they start, they then grow within the community and then they begin then to help the new people that are coming in. Um, so the, the people that are listening now that are fearful and worried and not sure what to do, if you start taking action and start doing the work, which would be my pun, um, you will start to feel better within days. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Time for the special. And so special for the date, um, I was thinking about doing something that would help you achieve the goal of your uh, you know if you want to do the exercise if you want to lose weight if you want to develop your uh, optimum health or stamina you need to do certain things to be able to maintain that motivation and that goal so i have a tool that can help you would you like to learn let's do it i, I want to learn yeah all right so the the power uh, and and I see that a lot of times people make the decision, but then they forget about it. When the stress is high, then they forget about it. 
or if they are having difficulty achieving their goal and it is taking longer time then they lose the motivation and desire and 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 uh, leave the leave the uh, their intention of keep practicing and so one of the things that can really help people is write it down when you write it down you can make it happen and then have that written down something in front of you so it can act as a reminder so if you are if you have the habit that i've been teaching a lot in this program is develop your uh, gratitude practice every day so when i write my gratitude uh, gratitude in the morning after i do like you know today i'm grateful for i do a special uh, practice called advanced gratitude and so i say i'm grateful in advance that and then i write down whatever goal i want to achieve so it could be my goal as i want to be uh, have optimum mental health or i i would like to have my scale say 115 pounds <laughs> and so uh, and sometimes uh, in addition to writing or uh, in in place of writing i would make a small picture so like i have in my advanced gratitude a uh, a picture of my weight machine and it says 115 on it <laughs> so <laughs> what it does is it keeps reminding me that that is my goal and i keep on progressing towards it even slowly sometimes you know you don't go progress that fast and sometimes you know you have the obstacles but when you have that vision and that's where you are going it helps you go towards that so people write their you know new year's goal and then by the uh, by this time you know their goal is kind of dwindling down so you need a reminder every day uh in some form some people just write it on a flash card and put it on their mirror some people um write it on on their computer desktop and um i write it in my journal every day so choose whatever way works for you but put your intention in writing somewhere for you to have a daily reminder that that's your goal and then you would be able to take small small steps towards your goal and your chances of success would would increase every day and people sometimes say okay well i did all this work and i have not achieved the achieved my goal but the more times you try the chances of success increases so keep trying i leave you guys uh, with this question today is the first day of the rest of your life what do you choose are you going to just complain about today that you were not able to do what you wanted to do or complain about the life till now or you're going to make an intention write it down and start working towards that one small at a time on that note stay happy and healthy thank you del for joining till next time dr rosina